All right, so folks, uh, thanks for joining us. This is Spoon TV. We are coming to you live uh, from Carwell, driving through from Carwell to Central Monrovia. So we came here basically today to give you an idea of what the road corridor is from Cardwell here to Central Monrovia. Spawn TV, I'm Nelson Collet. As you see, oh wow. The road, the road corridor here is very, very deployable. As you see, I am literally in the middle of the water. You see these guys, uh, these are the disadvantage use. Most times when the corridors are deplorable, like what you see here, these guys are the ones who will come around and try to put some rocks in the pop holes, uh, just to make sure that the places, those corridors are pliable. Usually they will not do this for free. So you see the guy has directed me already. He's waiting for something small. Thank you, yeah? Thank you, sir. Okay, so the guy had to get a small thing for the Saturday. So we're driving through now from um, Carwell. We are headed to Central Monrovia. And uh, uh, I'm going to make some stops along the road. To just give you an idea what it's like for drivers, vehicle owners, commuters, people who make their way through these different corridors on a daily basis, what they will have to go through. You see the kekes are along the road as well. The keke riders. This corridor is open to the keke or the tricycle. This is now one of the no-go zones where maybe you will see the checkpoints erected for motorcyclists not to ply. So for here, the motorcyclists are allowed to ply this corridor and they can make their way through from here uh, to as far as the free port of Monrovia. That's where the stopping point is for motorcyclists. So anyone going beyond that corridor will have to make sure that they have the helmet, that the motorbike is uh, registered, the bike is insured, that they meet all of those uh, basic uh, requirements before making use of those different corridors. So we are still on our way. Uh, I really don't know <laughs> this particular part of Carwell, but we're headed towards the Carwell Bridge, the one that links folks from Folks coming from the uh, from Central Town to maybe the Burrowville or the St. Paul Bridge area, and so this is what the road is like from Carwell on a regular, regular Saturday afternoon here in Monrovia. So what exactly? Uh, is the condition of the road like so like driving through this corridor now is is very free you know um very few areas you see some potholes and uh, you know that kind of uh, flooding situation but this is one of the corridors that was very beautiful following um some road work some construction under the administration of former president Ellie johnson's relief these poles you see along this corridor was once the beauty of this place. Uh, those uh, th These poles had the solar light. The solar lights were all on these poles. And you, when you drove along this corridor during the night time, you will see the beauty of Carwell. But now information we gather is that the lies along this corridor, the poles, the lies on the poles were stolen. And even the solar panel, the 
the small solar panels that were installed on the light poles along this corridor just to make sure that this place is light up uh, especially for those making use of this road during the night time all of those solar lights were stolen they were removed during the night time at some point the police was very involved they the, the police was in the business of going after some folks here to make sure that the lies are not removed and stuff like that but as we speak you will see the lights or the solar panel on very few of these poles here because majority of the solar panels were being uh, removed, you know. So we headed towards the Caldwell Bridge and giving you a few of what the condition of the road is like along this corridor. Uh, we are yet to reach Caldwell Junction. This is what a regular Saturday looks like along this corridor. So this was one of the beautiful corridors we had in the country. On the former president, Ellen Johnson's relief, people will come along these corridors, take some beautiful photos, just to showcase what the administration was doing at the time. And for some who have not seen, you know, modern roads, they will rely on these corridors because if you drove here during the night time, the place are so beautiful, given how light up the entire corridor was at the time. And if you drove during the night time, all the paintings you see on the sidewalk, like you see on the bridge. So we're now on the Carwell Bridge, like you see the red, white, and blue. You see all uh, on the sidewalk here. These things were beautiful, they painted, you know, it had a very pleasant look, but it has all faded out, you know, and so we are now on the bridge, leaving the Carwell Bridge, you see a huge presence of the Liberian National Police, they have their mini um, station there, a few police officers headed towards um, the Carwell Junction. So like you see here, along this corridor, if you want to make your way here safely without, without having some problems with your vehicle, then you just have to drive slow. Because as you see there, there are so many pop boats, um, so many bubbles along this corridor and driving here is not for the smaller vehicles uh, maybe those different sporting cars that are very low if you want to have some control of everything here you have to be a vehicle that is a bit higher so we've passed the Carwell Bridge uh, moving now very close to the Carwell Junction. From there, we'll be headed to the free port of Monrovia. This is what the road corridors, uh, the road corridor looks like here. This place is usually jammed on a Saturday, you know, but for some reason, I don't know why, there is not much of a traffic uh up to this point not much of a traffic here yes but um as you see most times especially in these kinds of areas you have almost everyone trying to make use of the one way because the other side of the road you know is something that you just don't want to temper with because the pop holes are very, very deep. And if you're not careful, you get stuck along this corridor. So, not too far from the Carwell Junction. Let's see what it looks like here. Especially 
on the Saturday. So for, for every time you drive along this corridor, you know, this is not one of the places where you will want to speed up that much because, because of the condition of the road. Most times you have to slow down, uh, make a brief stop because the roads are bad. Like you see, pop holes all along here. And this is what you will have to experience. So those with smaller vehicles, especially those who live here in the power area, and some of those people who have to go to work every day, you know, you have a smaller vehicle, you have to leave from here to go to Central Monrovia every day for work. You can imagine what you have to go through. Uh, maybe visit the garage on a regular basis because of, you know, the condition of the road here along this corridor. So these are areas where maybe the Ministry of Public Works will have to start to concentrate on. I remember this corridor was once the beauty of Cardwell, one of the beautiful corridors we had in Monrovia. But you can see how deplorable it is. Not just that the lights are off, not just that the solar panel lights are no longer serving the people. Another, another issue with this corridor is that the asphalt pavement has faded away or is gradually fading out. And so Liberians living along this corridor will have to get used to the shaking, the rocking, you know, whether you're on a motorbike, you're riding a keke, whatever you're using as a means of transportation, you have to brace yourselves uh, for some issues here. So as you see, there's a presence of the Liberian National Police along this corridor as well, especially here at the Carwell Junction. You always see the Liberian National Police is here trying to control everything that goes on. So this is one of the corridors that has been flooded <laughs> with the tricycles, the keke. This, is, this has become a major means of transportation for many Liberians along this corridor. So there are places where the keke will not go. There are places where the tricycle will not go. Um, but this corridor is a safe zone for the tricyclist and so this is where we are so being stuck here for a while is is not strange because power junction or this particular corridor is noted for traffic it's even better today given that today is saturday you have lots of funerals you know and stuff like that it's even better today because you will always experience these kinds of issues especially talking about traffic so this this corridor was very beautiful it was one of the beauties you have in this particular place but like you see now <laughs> the place is just so unattractive the asphalt pavement has gra or is gradually disappearing all you see here is the cross rocks, you know. And then the next thing you notice is that there's flooding almost everywhere. Now we are headed towards the free port of Monrovia. We're now headed towards the Freeport. So we we are now leaving the Carwell Junction. This is a mini market for those of you who have been along this corridor. 
You see, one of the issues that the country is still struggling with is the issue of garbage, waste disposal. You see, right on the road, the garbage is there, and right next to the garbage, you see people selling food, the regular Saturday market, the apple pepper, the peaceful all around. <laughs> And uh, there's a stockpile of garbage there as well. We're not on the route leading to Central Monrovia, going to the Freeport. And like the car well, this corridor, this portion of the road is even worse. This portion of the road is even worse. So, the purpose, even if you were sleeping and someone else was driving you, the purpose is just the first thing that will uh, give you a signal that you are now along uh, the corridor from point four to the freeport of Monrovia or stuff like that. So we now pass the Carwell Junction. And of course now headed to headed to the Freeport. You see on the board gas is 680. <laughs> and the next place here is 660. And sometimes you want to wonder how is this happening? You know, one person is selling a gallon of gasoline for 600. Uh, 680 Liberian dollars, and then the next person is selling for 660 Liberian dollars. But what that tells you is that the price of a gallon of gasoline, and clearly see here that um, the LPRC is, 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 is making some efforts in making sure that the price of gasoline is controlled to some extent. Because I remember quite recently the price of gasoline was very high. It increased to up to 900 Liberian dollars. Uh, that, that was about $5, a little over 5 USD. But now it's dropping. And kudos to the LPRC where Mr. Amos Twist sits as the managing director. So we are still headed to the Freeport. You can see there will always be some shakings here because this corridor, this is where the trucks from the Western Cluster and all of those concession sites will make use of. Uh, during the nighttime, even driving along this driving along this corridor during the nighttime is even more dangerous because the trucks will speed up. Uh, at a very high level, and so we're still moving. You see another serious flooding situation here. So, if you have a low car or a smaller vehicle driving along this place, is just terrible. Now, the condition of the road is like this. Yesterday there was sunshine, you know, there wasn't that much of a pull down the day before, same thing. Last night there was a little bit of a rain, but even with that, you see some portions of the road are flooded. You know, some portions of the road are, is, is, is kind of flooded. So we keep this trip let's drive together let's keep moving on so once we reach uh broad and johnson streets intersection uh then we'll be ending this live broadcast but until then thanks for joining us this is spoon tv i'm nelson colaire we're taking a drive through uh cardwell to Central Monrovia, trying to give you a few of what the rural situation is now.
quite recently there was some work done along this corridor. The Ministry of Public Works uh, did some, some filling in of uh, the pop holes. So the corridor was even worse. It was worse. It was more deplorable than what you see now. But they were able to put some crushed rocks on the road uh, just to temporarily address the situation. Um, as to whether that sort of solved the issue, no. But it has made this corridor a little bit pliable. Do a lot of people think that that did not bring about some kind of uh, solution to the issues? But it was able to make this corridor a little bit pliable. But even with that, if you have a lower vehicle making your way through this corridor, it is a tough thing all by itself. Even those with higher vehicles, sometimes they will experience breakdown. Because the thing about it is that you see the water and stuff like that in, in, in those pop holes. But sometimes you get in the pop hole and then you get to realize that it's deeper than what you thought. So some, some of the drivers will experience breakdowns and stuff like that. And this is why it gets concerning. Because here in Liberia, there was something established by former President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf under the regime of former President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf called the, the Road Fund. So with the Road Fund, for every gallon of gasoline that a Liberian goes to the filling station to buy, there is 30 cents extra that is added on a gallon of gasoline that money goes towards the National Road Fund. And the intent of paying extra telecent is to ensure that the government of Liberia uses that money to regularly maintain these corridors to make sure that the roads are pliable so that the vehicle owners who are making use of the road can, um, can do so without being worried that much about some damage that the deplorable road condition will cause to their vehicles. But even with the road fund and, and what Liberians are paying towards the road fund and, and, and stuff like that, for every time they purchase a gallon of gasoline, this is what this major corridor, uh, corridor looks like driving now to central Monrovia. And there has been some concerns. At some point, there were issues that uh, the petroleum importers were not making the money available to government, you know. But whatever the case is, the government is clawed with the responsibility to ensure that there is a smooth management of the road fund. So you see here how deplorable this corridor is. You see what these vehicles will have to go through. Not, not just that you have purpose along these corridors, but listen, the places are flooded and this is just terrible. You can imagine the condition of the road is like this. After the Ministry of Public Works did some minor work, you have the corridor like this, then come to think about the condition prior to the, the work being done by the Ministry of Public Works come to think about what it's like if you brought your brand new sporting car very low vehicle you want to enjoy yourself you want to have some comfort if you brought that into the country the best advice is that you shouldn't dream of making use of this corridor folks as we speak now because the condition of this corridor is just so bad it's just so terrible drivers who live here will have to go to the garages every time, regularly, almost every day, you know, even the KK riders. And <laughs> for some people, you may be wondering why you see the vehicles moving from left to right. That's because of the uncertainty that, that goes with driving along this corridor. 
you may see a little purple, you know, or just a patch of water somewhere. And maybe you think that you can just go there. Yeah, just, just driving that water. But if you're not careful, you might just be getting into uh, a deeper pit that will lead to some breakdown. You can see what that truck is going through. The water truck the shaking and stuff that like that that it will have to go through. This corridor, folks, I tell you, is very, very deplorable, very bad, very terrible. You can see the flooding all across there, across the street, the flooding situation. And this has been like this for years. This corridor has been like this for years. And sometimes people get to wonder as to what has the Ministry of Public Works? Maybe not just under this administration, but under previous administrations, what have the Ministry of Public Works been doing? Do we have any plans? Do we, how are we using the National Road Fund, for example? What are we using it for? What's the impact of the extra 30 cents that Liberians are paying on a regular basis to the government of Liberia through the National Road Fund for the maintenance of these corridors? When Liberians will have to drive in purpose, in flooded situations, and years in and years out, even the situation with drainages along these corridors cannot be addressed. This is Spoon TV. And even as I drive along this corridor, <laughs> I'm worried as I do this live broadcast from a late turning vehicle. I'm worried so that I don't experience a breakdown here too like many other vehicles who do, but this is the reality. This is the everyday reality of the Irish Liberian living along these corridors. For some of those in the authority, they really don't feel the pain that Liberians will have to go through because they drive comfortable vehicles. Or you can imagine the countless number of tricycles that have passed us, least to talk about the motorcycles that have passed, passed us these are the vehicles that will take Liberians in and out every single day. And this is what they will have to go through. Even some of the people driving, they drive worry every day that they will experience breakdown. That after making two or three trips along these corridors, they will have to spend a lot of money in garages just to keep their vehicles up and running. Even the people who have comfortable vehicles, some of them cannot drive along this corridor. Some of them will have to park their vehicles, get on commercial cars, get in these cacas, because the vehicles cannot just make the corridor that you see right here. This is the reality of the Irish Liberian who cannot afford to drive in the 45,000 USD vehicles. This is what they will have to go through. So we're moving very close to the free port of Monrovia, the gateway of the country's economy. Uh, we thought to give you a few of what it is there. Give you an idea of what the road corridor is like here. This is a major corridor. This corridor we're driving through will take you to Bowman County, Bapolu County, Grand Cape Mount County, and the rest of the counties along that part of the country. As a major corridor that takes you also to the free port of Monrovia. This is what the condition of the road is like. Spoon TV. Thanks for watching. I'm Nelson Collier. So we're not far from the free port of Monrovia now. There was some cement work done along this corridor. You will notice some, some shakings, but it was done to at least get this place pliable. I remember years back, uh, this corridor became a major concern when so many media outlets started to raise this issue. And then, at the time, former public works minister Mabutu Vlai Yimpan, the late, 
uh, took his team along this corridor after months of the citizens who reside here raising concerns and then they did some patching along the road here but in less than a year the cement pavement or whatever that was done filled out and after it filled it Liberians went back to the same deplorable condition of road this is what it's like right here along this corridor Spoon TV coming to you live I'm Nelson Collette thanks for joining me on this live broadcast kindly share the broadcast as you come on you see the container trucks are parked all along this corridor <laughs> uh, these are the people sometimes they free their containers and stuff like that they will bring them out we are right in the vicinity of the freeport now the gateway to the country's economy and um, at some point along this corridor folks i'm gonna make a stop i'm gonna park this vehicle get down a little bit and show you what the condition of the road is like because we are at the free port of monrovia we're not too far from the clara town Vi town corridor you know we are just next to that corridor and right before oh my god oh i'm already in a bubble before knowing so let me hope that I don't experience a breakdown here, okay? So I've successfully passed that. So at some point, I'm gonna make a stop. But this is the free port of Monrovia, folks. You see some of the containers packed. So sometimes when you hear, when you're watching the TV or you listen to the news and you hear that oh, the container truck fell and damaged things or ran into people, these are some of the reasons that will lead to those container trucks falling. Because the roads are deplorable. Sometimes you see a little uh, patch of water and you think it's just a little water. You want to jump into it. Before you know it, that is a whole, uh, it's a whole situation there all by itself. So this is the free port of Monrovia, the gateway to the country's economy. And uh, this is one of the checkpoints erected for motorcyclists. As you see, police officers out there in the motorcycles, they're having some, they're engaging some conversations. This is uh, the stopping point for the motorbikes. So if you're coming from the Carwell area where we just came from and maybe coming to Central Town, if you're using a motorbike, you have to stop there. Along this corridor is meant for KKS only. So this is the free port. Right before the gateway to the country's economy, you can see how deplorable the road is. These are some of the reasons why some of the container trucks will fall, damaging properties, sometimes leading to injuries of citizens, and, and sometimes even death, because this corridor is very, very deplorable. Very, very deplorable. Wow. Very, very deplorable. Even as I drive <laughs> along this corridor, I'm very worried about a, pro a possible breakdown or a visit to the garage <laughs> after driving through this corridor, folks. So we're headed now. Um, as I told you earlier, I will be making a stop briefly to take you around. There, there's somewhere along this corridor I want to show you guys. Uh, we're in Clara Town now. This is the Clara Town corridor. And uh, I will make this stop briefly to take you around the road and then we'll come back and drive until we get to Broad and Johnson Street's intersection in central Monrovia. This is a corridor in the, in the principal street of Monrovia in 2024, a country that has existed as an independent country for over 170 years. The oldest republic in Africa. This is what the condition of the road is like. We're right before the National Fisheries and Aquaculture Authority. Um, I want to make a brief stop here, as I told you earlier, to drive, to, to walk you around a little bit <laughs> and just show you, uh, and just give you a view of what the road situation is like here. Uh, as you see across there, folks, flooding is real. Rain or shine, 
this is what the condition of the road has been like along this particular corridor maybe i should cross this place yes i think i should cross this place before making that brief stop before making that brief stop to take you around so we're now in clara town we are now in clara town so we're now in clara town uh somewhere around the lprc where mr amos twist sits as the managing director of the lprc so we will make a brief stop here so i can take you around and show you what the road corridor looks like along this particular place all right, so folks, I'm about to take you on the other side of the road there to show you what the corridor of this road is like. Uh, right here, I keep following Spoon TV, kindly share the broadcast as I take you around here briefly. Then I'm gonna come back and then we'll continue our drive all the way to central monrovia that's where we headed <laughs> and nelson Collette, thanks for watching spoon tv okay let me disembark now <sighs> so we we'll try to take you around this corridor show you what it's like for the irish liberian who makes use of this uh, particular corridor So folks, this is what it's like. Uh, as you see right before us there. So, um, as you see right before us there. So I want to take you across guys. Let me take you across briefly to show you what uh, the condition of the road is like. So as you see here, usually you have two lanes going and two lanes coming um but the trucks all of the vehicles coming from this corridor will have to face the harsh reality of um, using the other side of the road um, this entire stretch of the road is totally abandoned as you see right before us here this entire stretch of the road is totally abandoned there is a serious flooding situation right before us here extending almost to the free port of monrovia and this is happening right before uh the lprc right before the office uh of the lprc here on the flip side you have the lprc and of course uh this is just what the reality of the road here is like here along this corridor you have uh most of the drivers for the lower vehicles like you see there for those lower vehicles they will get they will have some difficult time just making their way through this uh, particular corridor because you can imagine if a full runner suv is struggling to go through this serious flood then come to think about what a sedan we have to go through just to make use of this particular corridor so you can see the flooding situation has taken over this entire stretch of the road and sometimes folks are wondering what's the role of the ministry of public works what exactly is the national road come to for liberians how is the extra 30 cents that liberians are paying towards the maintenance of the road even benefiting Liberians in the first place when they will have to drive through these deplorable road conditions filled of flooding, uh, potholes, no lights along the corridors. And this is just the reality that thousands of Liberians will have to go through on a daily basis. Folks, this is School TV. And uh, we are going to continue this drive this is a major corridor. 
This is the road leading to the gateway of the country's economy. When you talk about the free port of Monrovia, uh, that entity that generates revenue for the country, that entity that generates millions of dollars on an annual basis, contributing significantly to the national kit, the national kit, the budget of the country. This is just the corridor that takes you to the free port of Monrovia. And this is right before uh, the LPRC right here. I'm Nelson Collette. Thanks for watching Spoon TV. So we're going to continue. We're going to continue our drive here. We are going to as far as Broad and Johnson Street. And that's exactly where we're going to end this live broadcast. So let's hope we can uh, continue from here. Let's hope we can continue from here. Thanks for watching Spoon TV. Uh. Okay, so we're going to take you through. Um, that's how we can continue this drive, extend it to as far as, wow. I hope I didn't experience breakdown. Okay, so we're good. <laughs> uh, we're good. So let me, let me, let me, let, let, let's continue going. Let's continue going. Um, you saw the flooding situation. <laughs> this is what Liberians are faced with. And we're still moving. So we're in the Claritown area. We're still moving. We want to get to central Monrovia. And then there we'll be leaving you. We're gonna take another time to go through the other corridors. As you see, along this entire corridor, the asphalt pavement has disappeared. So this is the LPRC head office here. The asphalt pavement have disappeared. And interestingly, there are companies, several companies that have taken the contract to do these corridors, to maintain the roads and all of that. But what the companies are saying to the government of Liberia is that it has been raining. The Public Works Ministry itself has at some point in time confirmed the information and agree with the contractors. But in the midst of all of that, Liberians will have to drive through this kind of terrible conditions just to get at their destinations on a daily basis. So we're moving towards Vat Town gradually. <coughs> Sorry folks. Um, we're moving towards Vat Town gradually. And then let's hope we can um, make our way there. So one interesting thing here uh, that I noticed here today is that there isn't that much of a traffic situation as compared to other Saturdays. Because you know, Saturdays are usually busy day when you have lots of funerals, wedding and ceremonies and all of those things going on, you know. But this is not, you know, so like the previous corridor we showed you folks, you can see how deplorable this corridor is as well and how terrible this corridor is. Flooding has taken over this entire corridor, like the previous corridor we show you. So this corridor is being abandoned. So the only way <laughs> you can easily make your way through this place now is if you were to use the other side. So if you have a smaller vehicle, it becomes even difficult for you to drive along this corridor. You can see smaller vehicles are getting stuck Right there, there's some um, uh, spikes going on as water is entering the other areas that water is not supposed to enter. And you can just imagine what Liberians are going through on a daily basis with this kind of flooding situation on the principal streets of Monrovia. The place leading to the gateway of the country's economy, flooding has taken over Monrovia people. 
flooding has taken over this corridor. And, and this is what the reality is right here. So for those who are operating the bigger vehicle, they will not have much of a problem because for them, they can easily make their way through here and stuff like that. But you can imagine what the reality is like here for thousands of Liberians making use of this particular uh, corridor. You can imagine what the reality is. Of course, uh, looking all the way up there, you will continue to see the harsh reality with respect to the deplorable road condition. So the first major flooding we show you along this corridor was with uh, right along the, the uh, right before the office of the LPRC. But you can see another one here. Where this entire corridor, the, this entire side of the road is being is now a difficult route for even the folks to make uh, to make use of. So as a result of this, you always experience this kind of uh, traffic situation because the vehicles that are ahead are finding it very, very difficult to make use of, to, to even get through the, the flood. They find it difficult because sometimes you want to get there and you're worried. You're thinking as to whether maybe the, the angle you want to take, you know, is, is the right one as to whether that 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 side of the road is not deep enough to a point where it's going to get you stuck this is the condition of the road in the height of the city in monrovia this is what the roads are like driving through from cardwell to central monrovia today we talked to on this saturday afternoon give you an idea of what the corridor of the road is like here so thanks for watching spoon tv thanks for watching spoon tv i'm nelson Collet. um let's hope we can keep going as you see every every step along the road there's never a smooth and I mean that kind of a smooth drive along this corridor. No, there's nothing such as a smooth drive, you know, a place where you just drive smoothly and go, no. You know, you always have this issue of uh, the purples and stuff like that to face here yeah, along this corridor. Wow. So if you're driving here, be it a smaller vehicle or whatever, you have to be just very careful because the pop holes here are just terrible. And so, as you see here, so the thing about this corridor is that there is no alternative route. There is no alternative route. If you're coming here, if you have, if, if you are coming to Vata or Clara Town, for example, <laughs> this is the corridor you have to use. It's either you use this corridor, or you go nowhere else, or you disregard going for whatever you wanted to go for along uh, this particular area. So at least this place is a bit better. Not much of a shaking, but the other side of the road is still terrible. Um. And this is what the reality is like here, folks. We try to take you through this corridor, give you an idea of what it's like driving here. And um, for the rest of these, uh, for the rest of the area here now connecting to the Gabriel Tucker Bridge. So we're in Vartan currently. We in Vartan currently. For the rest of the corridor, you see the police officers along the corridor here doing their regular inspection and all those kinds of stuff. But right at the intersection here that takes you to that takes you to the, the Gabriel Tucker Bridge. And there's another uh, serious situation here with flooding as well, as you see uh, with the pop hole. Let me put it that way. 
So there's a little purple here. Like many of the areas we've been through, there's a serious purple here as well. And this is what the folks will have to go through. Police officers there. This is one of the corridors where they do their regular inspection. And, and one thing that you always want to take note of is the fact that all of the traffic lights along the corridors here are not working. If you drive through the principal streets, even up to Broad and Johnson Street where we are headed right now, the traffic lights are not working. All of the lights are off. So in the case now, like now, you see there are police officers on the other side there, but they are seated in their boots. So if you cannot wait for the next driver, you know, and just use your own discretion as a driver, then um, you're going to get into trouble because no traffic light at the intersection. The police officers are there, but they are seated doing something else. And everyone is left to just go about the traffic their own way. Do what you can. It's like, it's like do what you can do in the traffic. You know, just go about the way you can handle it. And uh, it's up to you. So we are now on the Gabriel Tucker's Bridge above the Providence Island, <laughs> a very historic site in our country, Monrovia in sight. Of course, uh, this is where we are. We've successfully made it through the corridor from Caldwell to Central Monrovia. First, this is Spoon TV. I'm Nelson Kuller. Thanks a lot to all of you who have been watching the live broadcast, sharing your thoughts, um, and making sure that you stay with me along as we drove through getting at this point. So there's a police booth. There's a checkpoint here. And, um, and some mini inspection is going on. But part of the reason why you have this checkpoint is to ensure that the motorcyclists who are not authorized to do this corridor, that they did not, uh, that they don't go uh, beyond this point because this is the uh, this is one of the checkpoints mounted to make sure that the no go zone is maintained. You know, this process was rolled out over three months ago by the Liberian National Police, talking about some requirements for motorcyclists wanting to make use of certain corridors and stuff like that so uh that process was rolled out since that process was rolled out the liberia national police have done very well in making sure that the no go zone restriction for motorcyclists is maintained you know so sorry for that breaking so this is something that's been working for over three months the Liberian National Police has maintained the enforcement of no go zone for motorcyclists. So we are now on Johnson Street. We made it to Central Monrovia. <laughs> and here the road, yeah, the road is a bit better. Yes, uh, the road is, is okay. You can drive through the different corridors. But the only problem with Central Monrovia is that, and I will tell you folks, the problem with Central Monrovia is that you will drive through all these corridors and there's not a single functional traffic light not a single functional traffic light so you look at all ends of the road the left the right and all angle all corners of the road you will not see a single traffic light that is functional and um no traffic light just taking a look at this intersection there's a police officer there like you see from a distance but very few of the folks so everyone is left to just do what they can do, do it your way and stuff like that. You have uh, a few police officers from that end. You know, everybody just do it your way. Pedestrians are crossing. Kudos to the government of Liberia. The, the crosswalk is visible. At some point, <laughs> the crosswalks were not visible. But at least you can be able to identify where crosswalk is. We're now moving towards crown hill on brush street this is the famous brush street people most of you who have not been to liberia for a very long time and uh, some of you left liberia in the 80s the 70s and stuff like that this is how brush street looks like in 2024 afri land bank 
right there. And um, you, you have the Y, is it the YMCA? Yeah, YMCA. And you know, in all these different places right here. And so we're now on Broad Street. And as soon as we bend this curve, we'll be on the Capitol Bypass. As soon as we bend this curve, we'll be on the Capitol Bypass. I keep seeing 660 for a gallon of gasoline. This is from the Camboys along the sidewalk. So if you want to buy your sidewalk gas, know that the price is 660 dollars. But the filling stations are a bit higher. I'm told that the reason why it's that way is because the uh, the gallon, you know, the quantity of gas that the filling station will give you, as in one gallon of gasoline, is a bit higher than what the uh, camp boys will give to you. So the camp boys, the guys who sell in the in the uh, in, in, in along the sidewall in these uh, the jars you see here. Their prices, uh, the, the price for them, their price is a bit lower than what the filling station gave you. So we're now on the Capital Bypass, moving towards Sink Call now. Spoon TV, thanks for watching. Yes, we initially planned to, to, to just stop at the, uh, you know, to stop at to stop at uh, Royal Johnson intersection but uh, we are going to make a stop or uh, we are going to end this broadcast shortly so this is the capital bypass one thing about this portion of the road is that whenever it rains whenever there's a little rainfall this place will get flooded unimaginably I mean it will get flooded to a point where the water will start to enter some of the cars that's how serious flooding is for that portion of the road we just left. You know, so aside from just seeing the road being rocky, pop poles and stuff like that, uh, that is one of the major flooding zones along this corridor. All right, folks, I want to say thanks to all of you for watching Spoon TV. My name is Nelson Collette. Thanks for driving through with me from Carwell on to central monrovia this afternoon this is how i like to leave you um the next time we bring you a similar broadcast will be later, somewhere else and we will certainly give you an idea of what these different corridors are like uh what needs to be done um you know but as you saw through the corridor we just drove uh, through there's a serious need for the government to make some intervention with respect to. so i want to say thank you for watching spoon tv have a good day and uh bye bye for now